Hello everyone, my name is Joey Osborne and my partner is Kyle Schroeder. And Kyle works for a company in Idaho Falls that does research. And they research uh, different composite materials and do different testing for it. And we want to do our heat transfer project on one of these materials. So the objective of the experiment is to calculate and analyze the heat transfer coefficient during the heating process and then afterwards calculate the heat transfer um, from radiation during the cooling process of the material. And some of the key equations that will be used um, for these calculations are shown on the left. We'll be using heat flux and then obviously heat transfer due to convection and heat transfer due to radiation. Um, so for our experiment, the heat flux um, is determined from a correlation that is based on the torch that we will be using. And the torch we'll be using uses an oxidizing flame shown in uh, the left figure. So we'll be using the, the figure of B. And it's based on the type of flame and the distance the flame is from the material. And so we will be comparing um, the heat flux from this correlation to the actual heat flux that we will get using the thermal pile. And it's shown here. So the experiment calls for a setup using a thermal pile that we will use to generate a voltage. And that voltage will, will then be transformed into a corresponding heat flux, which we will then compare to the correlation that we saw on the previous slide. And so we began the setup of our experiment using a fire brick that was placed about 40 millimeters away from the torch. And then as we uh, ignited the torch, um, we would time the temperature change as it was heating up and then cooling down and waited for the voltage reading that the pile would get and then convert that to a heat flux. Um, after that was done, we replaced the fire brick with the test sample that we're using, the composite material, and we placed it about the, the exact same location, um, same distance from the, the torch, and we ignited the torch and then as well um, started getting readings of the surface temperature of the, the material um, as it was heating up from the torch and then afterwards as it was cooling once we ex extinguished the torch. Um, the experiment allowed, allowed us to measure the distance as well as the surface temperature and the shape of the object in order uh, to use the variables needed to calculate for the heat flux, the heat transfer, and then the heat transfer coefficient. Um, and then picture on the left we uh, are using a heat gun to take um, temperature readings uh, at the surface of the material and as well as the uh, brick wall. And then the picture on the right is um, showing the torch as it's um, warming up the material. Um, so the we took the correlation from um, the slide three and we um, uh, as well put in our experimental values to see how it would compare to the correlation. And as we can see, the, the experimental values were in line with, the, with what it was predicting to be um, from that correlation. So we knew that the thermal pile was agreeing with the, the theoretical model that we found from another company. And so we were expecting a heat flux of about 500 watts per centimeter square, which ends up being like 5 million watts per meter square. And um, from that, we were able, the heat transfer coefficient during the heating process and the heat transfer due to radiation during the cooling process can be modeled in order to predict both variables at different times during the process. So for the, the heating process, we were experiencing um, heat transfer due to convection. So we took the heat flux of that 50, 50 mil, or 5 million watts per meter square, and we times it by 
the surface area to get our overall heat transfer rate. And then from that, we were able to, tra uh, to calculate the heat transfer coefficient once we um, were able to uh, subtract the surface temperature from the atmosphere temperature. And so th the model on the left shows the heat transfer coefficient as it changes due to the time. And we can see that the heat transfer coefficient um, decreases as time goes on. And then during the cooling process, we um, we are experiencing radiation and convection. And this is where we kind of messed up with our calculations. We um, are only showing if it was cooling down due to radiation and not due to convection as well. So that's something we will fix um, before our final turn in. But if it was all um, based on radiation, the model on the right would show how the heat transfer due duration would decrease as time goes on. So the the objective we had of generating and analyzing models of the heat transfer coefficient and the heat transfer during the cooling process. Um, uh, it's the the second part, the heat transfer during the cooling process, is something we're going to fix. But um, during the heating process, the models that were generated versus the experimental data we were able to gather matched. Um, so we were um, pleased with that. Um, but that's the cooling process is definitely something we're going to fix um, for our final turn in. And these are some of our resources we used for the models and correlations we gathered. And then the slide is the reference material of the calculations we did. And that is our presentation.